and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the live patch 1-6 notes uh, reaction. They just came down a couple of hours ago. This is us just going over it for the first time here um, on stream and we're going to be putting this up on YouTube also. So y'all on YouTube feel free to weigh in in the comment section as well if you got anything that you want to add to the discussion about what's going to be happening here with patch 1-6. And we'll also, you know, so we'll be talking about the card balance changes, of course, because there's a bunch of them. And then we'll also be talking about the event uh, that's going to be going on, this Spirit Blossom event. Looks pretty sweet. And so we'll discuss that as well. Um, finally, the stream tomorrow uh, will be starting later. For those of y'all you know, here on Twitch or you know, those of y'all on YouTube that want to join, uh, we'll be starting at 3 or so 4 p.m. Eastern, um, our normal uh, late stream time, just because we need to give... Uh, the patch time to come on out. All right. So um, I'll also put the link to the, the patch notes in the video description, of course. All right. So let's start with the card. I mean, there's there's a Spirit Blossom Festival that's July 22nd, which is tomorrow through August 19th. So almost an entire month. We'll discuss this at the end, though. What What is all this? What does this mean? And, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through it right now. We're going to first start with the card updates. All right, we got uh, the champions are, of course, first. We have Heimerdinger. Um, <clears throat> this is what uh, Heimerdinger has not changed as far as like what the card actually is. It's still the exact same card. What has changed are the turrets. So y'all remember that the Floor Be Gone, of course, was the three mana, and it was the three one elusive. Now Floor Be Gone is the six mana, six one elusive elusive so whenever they play a six so whenever heimerdinger plays a six mana card that's how you get your floor be gone your apex turret the fearsome has moved to the three mana slots and the storm lobber uh, and so this used to be the four mana card storm lobber which used to be the six mana card was the six one overwhelm has now moved to four mana so basically just these three turrets have um been switched around that's the only change here with heimerdinger um, nothing else is changing still cost zero all that kind of stuff um so some people this is uh this is um uh what's the word um i don't know there's there's a lot of different reactions here to heimerdinger i don't have i can't the words like on the tip of my tongue um uh oh i'll move on okay so basically there's a lot of people that think that heimerdinger is not going to be good anymore and I'm actually in the opposite uh, camp from that. I don't think that if you look at this change with Heimerdinger, I don't think that this really changes Heimerdinger at all, to be honest. Um, I don't. I don't think that like. I don't think that there's uh, much difference between having the th the three one be the elusive and the three one be fearsome and the six one being you know with the six one being elusive now instead of overwhelm or the four one. You know, now being overwhelmed instead of fearsome they're all still great all of these turrets are amazing like it's not easy to just deal with three one fearsomes either like that's still like you have to you know you don't get to just chump block three one fearsomes you have to block with um units that are going to be larger um and everything uh and so like that you know like that's still a great turret of just three one fearsome um maybe it's not quite as good as the three one elusive but there's going to be times where we'll be better. You know, if your opponent just has, uh, like, their Shadow Assassins or something like that, they would have been able to block the Floor Be Gones. Now they can't. Like, you always have to block these Apex turrets with large creatures. And then, you know, like, there's... Obviously, there's so many 4-mana spells. And, you know, they used to have the 4-1 Fearsomes. You saw those were pretty good. Getting 4-1 Overwhelms is also great with all of the different 4-mana spells. Um, you know, again, if you want to block with... Uh, lower um, lower cost units like 1-1s one and 2-1s and stuff like that, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. Heimerdinger is still very, very good. Plus, um, the 6-mana six, the six mana thing being elusive now, a 6-1 elusive is huge. If you don't have an elusive in play, if you can't block this, that is so much damage. That is almost a third of your life total from just one hit from one of these that are free like that is this thing is such a threat a 6-1 elusive is an incredible threat um that's going to be really difficult to deal with 
And there are lots of great six mana spells. Of course, you you know you kind of start looking towards like Heimerdinger plus Lux, where Lux also cares about six mana spells. And so you have like your things like Remembrance and Unlicensed Innovation and Back to Back and things like that. You can put in a Piltover and Demacia deck, and you can start generating six one elusives. That's pretty awesome. And then yeah, and then and then they will very very quickly become. Um, 7-2 elusives whenever you just play two of them, right? Because you just need to summon 12 plus power of turret still to level up Heimerdinger, like always. And so that's just two of these things. That's, you know, perfect math of, you know, adding six twice. And then you get leveled up Heimerdinger, and boom, now there's only 7-2 turrets. Um, so yeah, that's, that's honestly uh, very scary. Like, this is really, really scary. I... I Personally, I would think that if we'd move the turrets around, I wanted to see the elusive go down to like the one mana card or the two mana card. Um, hey, we got a donation deck from Lemon Slayer. Um, let's see, let me check that out here real quick. The, <laughs> the on-screen notification for the donation deck has not really figured out um, what to do about like those deck codes. They kind of mess up those messages. So let me read what this said. Um, I've messed with this deck so much it hiccups is the best way to put it maybe you can figure it out it's driving me nuts word, word to the wise unyielding spirit just quit no solving that <laughs> okay all right Lemon Slayer I will definitely check it out and uh, see if I can figure out uh, how to improve that deck uh, after this so, thanks to that donation deck okay so now so that's that's about Heimerdinger so Honestly, I don't think that Heimerdinger's power has changed very much, and, and I think people um, are kind of... Uh, I think people are underrating how good all three of these turrets still are, and how there's... there's Yes, there is a change between them. How it was before was better for Heimerdinger than this, but not by a whole lot. And Floor Be Gone being like this elusive is super, super scary. Now I I'm just kind of specifically referring to Heimerdinger. I know there's some people in the in the chat that are talking about another card, and let's go talk about that because th that deals with Heimerdinger. Sorry for the spoilers of some other cards that are getting nerfed. This is the thing that now Flash of Brilliance being changed to cost four mana now instead of three mana. That is obviously very very huge, and that's a big nerf to Heimerdinger because this is the card that's you know, you would just pair with Heimerdinger and it, you would be able to get multiple free three ones, you know, regardless of the keyword. And they wanted to get rid of that, um, where you at least spend one mana for your Flash of Brilliance, you know, because you have to have four, you play it, you get three back. And then, you know, you still have to have four, you can play it, get three back. Now you can still, so you basically you're getting one mana three ones with Flash of Brilliance now. Um, if you have, you have to have a large, um, you know, you have to have a large beginning amount of mana. You have to have at least four whenever you play this to get a one mana three one. So you still, you know, so it's not, it's not terrible, but that's a huge, huge nerf to the Heimerdinger deck. Heimerdinger as a card, I don't think has really changed, but Flash of Brilliance, of course, being four mana instead of three, that's a big, big change to Heimerdinger. Now you'll get, yeah, that's true. Now you'll get one mana four ones. That's true, not three ones. You'll get one mana four one overwhelms, which still, honestly, nothing really wrong with a one mana four one overwhelm. <laughs> there's a lot of other good four mana spells, especially if you're uh, um, pairing it with Ionia that has like their Deny and Concussive Palm and stuff like that. So there's a lot of good four mana cards. If, if you want to pair with, if we're going to be pairing this with Demacia, as we talked about with Heimerdinger and Lux and Demacia. Four mana Flash of Brilliance honestly helps Lux. That's, you know, it's easier to level up Lux whenever you're spending four mana, not three mana. You know, now a Flash of Brilliance and then a single combat, boom. Like, that's that's a level up of a Flash of Brilliance and a Mystic Shot. Boom, that's a level up, you know, like where before that was not. So it does kind of kind of helps um, Lux a little bit. And then again, you know, you're still like with that kind of tech, you're creating a six plus cost spell. So you know, if it's like a six man, if it's a six mana spell, you you know, you can still be creating your remembrance, 
from your flash of brilliance that then makes your 6-1 elusive turret so it's not it's not like it's over for heimerdinger heimerdinger is not dead um, but this is this is much more of a change that hurts heimerdinger than moving the turrets around in my opinion um so there we go all right there's another champion change in a little bit braum um braum is now going to be going back to zero power still keeping the claws of the first time i survived damage summon a mighty poro still keeping that still being able to generate that free mighty poro the 3-3 overwhelm but now braum will be an 05 that will level up to be a 1-6 so it'll still it'll get the power whenever it levels up it will still add an additional plus you know plus one and plus one but starting out at 05 um and and they they did admit that uh whenever they made the um change to braum they wanted they tried to push braum um a little much because they wanted they definitely wanted to have braum see play since braum was seeing like no play before um and everything and so they and that's that's exactly what i've been saying ever since that i thought they they did uh pump up braum a little too much that's something that i've said uh, many times and this scale back of having Braum be zero power I think makes sense we'll see um, how good zero power Braum is but yeah I think I think this could fit in nicely you still get you know you still get uh, to generate that mighty Poro fairly easily um, Braum's difficult to deal with but now Braum doesn't just you know eat up all sorts of one health units immediately and I think that's good because you know, like as somebody who plays like a lot of Teemo, like my my opponent plays Braum, kills my Teemo, and gets a Mighty Poro just for free. <laughs> you know, like it, it still has you know Braum and everything. Like you know, like it had no cost. Oh man, that was that was so sad, and that, that's so good. And so I think this makes a lot of sense to have uh, Braum start at zero power. So yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this change. I'm sad for my Bannerman Braum deck that you know we played as our level up deck uh, last weekend. Um, I'm sad for for that deck because that you know loved having Braum have a little bit of power with that deck. Um, we'll see if Braum still fits in there. All right, and then and Nick, then the other only other change to a champion is with Anivia's egg form. The egg Nivia, I guess the they realize that an egg with two health. It's kind of it's kind of weird that it was just like a little egg, but yet it still had more health than a lot of, you know, a lot of things, uh, being two health and you know just going down to one health and and said, um, oh, okay, yeah, lemon lemon slayer. I I basically just said that I'll I'll check out that deck later and I'm um you know I will be I will check it out and definitely see what I can do to, um to improve it and then yeah we'll play it uh soon also and everything so yeah i'll get get you there for the donation deck so thank you very much for for that and i'll try to improve it uh first so this this makes sense it's just a little egg it, it could be easy to kill um you know get that fragility into the egg i, I think that makes sense um this wasn't this wasn't really a change that i was really um expecting or um, think that needs needed to happen or anything i think it makes sense we'll see how it plays um i'm not not mad at it i'm not thrilled by it you know we'll just kind of see how it plays this one i was pretty surprised about so relentless pursuit is now going to be a slow speed spell instead of fast and um, I guess they said that, uh, you know, they've been wanting to make it for a while. Rally is generally intended as a slow speed effect. So, yeah, this is a nerf to Relentless Pursuit because a, a very powerful way to use Relentless Pursuit, in my opinion, was during combat or in response to a spell, you know, just being being fast. And so that whenever, um, especially like if your opponent attacked you in combat, you cast Relentless Pursuit and then they don't get priority again before you get to attack. Or, again, if they cast some kind of spell, maybe a removal spell or something, whatever, and then you cast Relentless Pursuit in, in response, so then so then it still goes to you for priority next, um, because that was their priority, 
and then you get to go straight to attacks. This is this is a pretty big nerf on the card of you needing to have priority, cast your Relentless Pursuit, then your opponent gaining priority to do stuff, and then after that, then you get to attack. That's a pretty big nerf, and honestly, this was a card that I didn't love necessarily. Like This is a card that I've kind of always thought was a little overrated, in my opinion, and now making this slow speed, it's really something that I'm not that thrilled about playing anymore. So, yeah, they said that it said that Relentless Pursuit is already very often cast at slow speed. Um, I would say that I probably cast it at not at slow speed more often than casting at slow speed. But uh, yeah, yeah. But there we go. See, and it could be overly potent when used in response to a round opening combat or play of or unit play effect or during combat. And that's that's where I would use it. That's where it'd be overly potent, I suppose. That's where I felt like that uh, had the best use. So I do think for those of y'all that like your Relentless Pursuit text, this is a pretty big nerf in my opinion, but we'll, we'll see. Nerfing the only card helping Demacia aggro. I can't really agree with that whatsoever. I, I love Demacia decks. I think Demacia, as we'll kind of talk about more like towards the end, but I think Demacia has gained a lot from, from all these nerfs with other stuff. And I am not really, I was never really interested in Relentless Pursuit before or now. I, I don't think that's a card that's necessary in Demacia decks, in my opinion. Maybe in like the really aggressive Demacia decks, I suppose. I guess I'm thinking more Demacia mid-range. So I guess, I guess, okay. So yeah, if you want to be real aggressive. All right, anyway, next card, Arena Bookie. Arena Bookie's getting uh, buffed. A lot of discard cards are going to be getting buffed. So now Arena Arena Bookie used to be a 3-mana 2-1, and now it's a 2-mana two 2-2. Two. So re take the cost, reduce it by 1, add a health. Uh, definitely, that's obviously a, a big buff. Because a 3-mana 2-1, just not really interested in playing. You know, like, it's just not... It, it just can never really trade effectively. It dies super easily. It's just something you don't really want to play. A two mana two two. Well, that's not like the best stats. You really want to have like two mana three twos, honestly. Two mana two two. That's that's playable. You can you can get away with a two mana two two. So I th I think this is much more playable. I think it had zero playability whatsoever beforehand, and now, okay, now we're talking. Now we can at least. Uh, get into it and um, you know maybe give it a shot. So Arena Bookie, of course, says round start. You discard your lowest cost card to draw one. So uh, you play it. They don't kill it. Uh, the very next turn, this happens, and you don't you don't get to. It's not like a may. You know, like you don't get to choose. Do you do you want to discard your lowest cost card? It's just automatic. So you just gotta hope that your lowest cost card is not something you want to discard. You know, hopefully it's not like your Mystic Shot and. Uh, and you don't want to discard your Mystic Shot because it's getting discarded. Um, with this card, I think this would honestly be better if this was discard your highest cost card to draw one. Because if, you, if you're if you constantly discarding your lowest cost card every turn, you're going to end up with a hand that just has a lot of expensive spells. And that's not... That's not necessarily great. You know, like that's not... That's not uh, it's not really what you want, you know, whenever you're thinking about a hand of just having a bunch of spells that are your most expensive spells in your deck. Because uh, all your low-cost stuff keeps getting discarded. Um, chat's pointing out some good stuff. Chat, chat says that uh, Arena Bookie works great with Draven now. That's, you know, I hadn't really thought about uh, Draven and Arena Bookie. Yes, it does. It re that really does, because your Draven generates those uh, Spinning Axes. And you can discard that spinning axe to draw one with Arena Bookie. I guess similar, you can think of like Clump of Wumps and Chump Wump. You know, like those things that just create the mushroom clouds, right? You can just uh, create mushroom clouds, have Arena Bookie, discard them, and draw a real card. And so you could kind of have, you know, like a Noxus PNZ deck with those things that can just generate uh, those free cards that are really low cost. Maybe you put, you know, maybe you combine it with Rummage and Jury Rig. And so if Jury Rig's your lowest cost card, sure, discard that. Draw a card kind of thing. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, maybe we can work something with that. Um, Shadow Blade, bipolar, and that's that's a good one. Um, Ren Shadow Blade that now has uh, strike, and you create a um, Shadow Fiend in hand, one mana four three. You can you know discard that. So basically, you can we can kind of go through and and look at the card library and uh, see what we have that can generate free low cost um, cards, and then we'll be able to um, discard them to draw cards. Now that doesn't really work with like Heimerdinger, as we were just talking about Heimerdinger. You know, if you make a zero mana turret or a one mana turret, those are fleeting, so they'll be discarded from your hand at the end of turn. And so that at the round or the end of round, I guess. And so then at the round start, they won't be in your hand anymore. So you won't have them to discard to Arena Bookie. Um, uh, yeah. So definitely, definitely a card that I much more, you know, again, before this card was just not possible to play at three mana, two, one. Now two mana, two, two, mana investments a lot less. You don't. It doesn't just die to everything. Now we can actually start talking about Arena Bookie and really f finding some stuff to do with it. So I think this is certainly a big winner because it went from <laughs> zero chance of being played to now, yeah, let's let's try out some Arena Bookie. All right, uh, at four mana we got Basilisk Rider. This is our next one. It, they are nerfing the power a little bit, which I I think that this card needed a nerf whenever they. Um, just buffed it up, and it was a 6-4 Overwhelm after the Allegiance trigger. This card was honestly too good. Getting 10 power and health combined for 4 mana with the Overwhelm keyword just dealt, dealt way too much damage and everything. Um, I, so they didn't want to just go back. I guess they didn't want to just revert the card to be exactly what it was before um, and just get rid of that health. So instead, they're taking away a power. So now you're looking at... Um, when the Allegiance trigger is hit, you have a 5-4 Overwhelm for 4 mana. Still a very good card. It's kind of like, and that's still a really big body. Like 5-4 four for 4 is is kind of the bar of what a lot of other things are. It's kind of like the, the flipped version of a Bull Elnuk, but it has Overwhelm. You know, like Bull Elnuk's really big uh, for 4 mana. And so Basilisk Rider is kind of that same thing at 5-4. I think this is a very good change. I think the 6-4 was um, just unnecessary unnecessarily large uh for the rider and so i think i think uh five four is definitely a great change um and so yeah you know it's the you know the flipped version of a legion veteran or a or a bull l knock like i was saying um yeah i think this is just a great change very happy for this one okay crimson disciple um this is two two cards that get changed here the same. Now, you know, Crimson Disciple, of course, used to deal two damage to the enemy Nexus whenever it survived damage. Now it's doing one damage to the enemy Nexus. And they make a great point here of um, there's just, I'll kind of read this part. Just, Several cheap Noxus units are both effective plays on curve, you know, just in combat and everything. And then they also have Nexus damage effects that make them powerful reach tools in the late game. So just combining both of those together, that's, that's just you know amazing right like that's just a sweet spot of of really really effective cards if they are um you know great plays on curve and also powerful reach tools in the late game that's tough to beat that's tough to beat and so they so they decided that uh basically they didn't want as much closeout potential with these so instead of doing 10 percent of the nexus life total with two damage each now they're doing five percent with one damage each um, certainly, certainly that's a lot less, you know, that's, that's going to be weakening at Crimson Disciple. Now, there are people that are saying that Noxus, um, and then our other one that's the exact same is Legion Grenadier, same thing. Now, um, the thing about Legion Grenadier is that I, like, two mana three one that whenever it dies does one to the enemy Nexus is honestly still really good. Like, that's a great blocker and everything. I think that's awesome them pumping up the health to two i think is kind of unnecessary and really makes this card great you know a two mana three two um it's still awesome we but now you know it's still and, and uh you know it gets gets that last breath damage this card um 
is not really worse than what it was before. You know, it's obviously a little bit worse because it's only doing one to the enemy nexus whenever it dies instead of two. But now it's, you know, you don't get to just vile feast this. It doesn't just die to withering whale. You can actually use transfusion on Legion Grenadier now um, where you couldn't before because it would die. Um, this is still, like, this is a, this is honestly still a really strong card. It's a great play on curve. It's not like this is too good, you know, like you can you can think of like there's a lot of other two mana three twos that also have an ability that are that are really good, like um Kempunk Pickpocket, you know, being a two mana three two that can generate cards. It's like it's not like it's too good, but as far as for Noxus goes with um Noxus being a little weak to Vile Feast Withering Whale, that kind of stuff, and um, but now now you can use transfusion with Legion Grenadier, now Vladimir trigger doesn't just kill Legion Grenadier. Um, you know, good stuff for this card. This is, this is, uh, you know, this may even be a buff in a lot of games. <laughs> um, but yeah, Grenadier was definitely really annoying with Harrowing previously of like just doing the two damage each time. I, I do understand that. Um, but anyway, some people like, like we're discussing this in Discord earlier, the, the Discord channel that we were discussing these in and some people are saying that noxus aggro is going to be dead now with with these changes and i don't believe that's the case at all i think noxus aggro will still be very good even with these three changes um yeah i i, I think that crimson disciple still very playable legion grenadier still very playable um definitely this isn't really much of a nerf in my opinion All right, we discussed Flash of Brilliance when we talked about Heimerdinger a little bit ago. Okay, and we got a new play pattern for Sump Dredger and Zonite Urchin, the two uh, cards that require you to discard a card. So now Sump Dredger and Urchin, both of them say, to play me, you discard one, but then you also just draw one immediately. So with Urchin, you don't need to just wait till Urchin dies to draw one because it had the last breath effect so you just get to d draw a card immediately and with some dredger um uh you know like it it was just two mana four three discard one and now i like this more of a three mana four three discard one then draw one i like that more and so yeah both of these should just be more satisfying right like that's what they want they want them to be more satisfying to play and i think that i think that does make them both more satisfying to play i don't think it necessarily buffs them too much like where we're gonna see like a whole bunch of either one whoa after wizard getting that resub thank you after wizard 39 amazing months it's so many months one thing that's a little bit of a nerf here with the urchin is there are a lot of cards that generate a one mana um, unit for you that just puts it into play. You know, like there's the, uh, let's see, there's Jailbreak is one of them, like the one mana create a one one. There's the, oh, I mean, they're the Bilgewater cards. There's the three mana three two that you can put a one one drop into play. I just can't, I can't think of the names right now. And there's the, the three mana card that you put two one drops into play. The, the spell petty officer right so there's petty officer and then um double trouble i think double trouble is that one and then yeah then the then there's the yeah the scout unit the two four um island navigator uh so there's there's four cards right there that put a random one cost unit into play for you and urchin was one of the best things to always get because it was just a two one that had the last breath draw a card you didn't have to do the play me discard one now it urchin's not as good in those scenarios because it's to play me you discard one and draw one so if you if it just gets generated it's just in play it's just going to be a two one and you're not going to have your last breath draw a card anymore so that's going to be kind of sad that urchin is now downgraded with all of those cards uh, you don't get to draw anymore with those you only get to draw whenever it's played you know whenever it's played then you do your discard one draw one um let's see the other thing about this i was kind of hoping they would they would buff up these discard things a little bit more i, I don't know maybe i was these 
don't really make Jinx better. So a lot of people, I've heard from a lot of people that Jinx needs to be buffed, and I don't think that's the case at all. I think Jinx is a wonderful card on like just face value of what, like just the stats that Jinx has and all the stuff that Jinx does. It's a great card. It's it's really strong. The problem with Jinx decks are the is the rest of the deck basically the the especially the units that Piltover and Zahn has and like the the kind of cards you want to play with Jinx they're all much below the curve when you look at the other regions and things like that and that's that's it's not like like Jinx like the card Jinx needs to be buffed it's just the package around Jinx of like all of the other um all, all the other cards you usually play in a Jinx deck or that you you can play like that kind of stuff they're all pretty weak, and Piltover and Zon doesn't really offer much to help Jinx out. Now, these are these are the kind of cards that you would want to pair with Jinx. Discard units, they're PN, you know, it's the same region, all that kind of stuff. But these don't really help Jinx, because now you discard and draw one immediately, you're not really emptying your hand, which that's that's of course the thing you really want to do with Jinx, because a leveled up Jinx is a five or sorry, is a four mana five four quick attack that also draws an extra card a turn. And also, if you empty your hand while you have it in play, you, you get to create that one mana um uh super mega death rocket. Like it does all of that stuff, it's incredible. I don't see why you, why or how you could buff that. The problem is, is just the the PNZ units you put in it. It's so hard for those to match up profitably against the units for other regions. Um, yes, Rand Danny. If you have if you have a Jinx in play and you have a two cards in hand and one of them is a Sump Dredger and um, and then. Then you can play some dredger, discard your last card. It would level up Jinx, and then you draw one. Yes. What I'm referring to more is that these are these are your early early turn plays, and so whenever you play, you know, Urchin on turn one, you're not reducing the amount of cards in your hand. When you're playing some dredger on turn three, you're not reducing the amount of cards in your hand, and so it's it's gonna that means it's gonna take longer to get your hand to be empty in order to have your leveled up jinx yeah so that's um so for those y'all that that uh like jinx decks or think that jinx needs to be buffed i i think that's what you really need, kind of need to focus on is um the cards around jinx because those are the things that are that are weak compared to other regions okay now, a nerf that I was honestly very surprised about. Shadow Assassin is now going to be a 1-2 moving forward instead of a 2-2. Two -two. If so I've been playing I've been playing Rune Terra every day, you know, for a while now. You know, since open beta, since about the middle of February. Um, March, April, May, June, July. So five, so over five months now. A long time. And I think that if you look at Throughout that time, basically since open beta till now, um, if you if you ignore the champions, look at all the rest of the cards. If you want to pick out a card that was that's the very best card in all of Legends of Runeterra, uh, besides the champions, I think it's like far and away Shadow Assassin. Like I don't think that there's any card that's really that close to Shadow Assassin. This card is just always in every single Ionia deck. It's it replaces itself. It's been just a huge part of. Um, the elusive decks that did so well, it's a huge part of all the Ionia control decks. It's just, um, it's so efficient. It's three mana, two, two elusive is a great body. And then it also replaces itself. You get that draw one card. It's just awesome. It just goes with everything. It's so good. It, it is honestly the best non-champion card in the game. And it has been the whole time. So now that it's, now that it's a one, two, We'll have to see because one two, you know, there's a obviously just a huge, huge difference between one two and two two. Um, this is a big time nerf, in my opinion. Um, it's so much more difficult to have a one two profitably trade with anything, you know, like whenever whenever you're blocking, attacking that kind of stuff, like just getting in combat with other units. 
And then of course it's it's obviously just a makes the clock um, so much slower. It you can just sit back and take hits from a one power uh, unit for a really long time. It's just really not much of a threat whatsoever. And so you if your opponent plays a shadow assassin, you don't really have to be worried about dying. You know you know how how many games you've played like where your opponent has like two shadow assassins in play and they just hit you for four, hit you for four, and you're like, man, I am dead. Like I like that's so much damage. And you know, you're trying to find something to deal with the elusives because, like, you know, they are elusive and they're they're difficult. You know, elusives are not easy to deal with. Now with one power, they have two shadow assassins in play. They attack you. You take two damage. You're like, cool. All right. Well, I got a lot of time to figure out what to do about those. Um. So yeah, that's this is a big time nerf. Potato says, would a two one elusive be more attractive than the one two that it'll be? Yes. Yes, it, you would much rather have a 2-1 elusive than a 1-2. Um, kind of like Green Glade Duo, you know, like you would rather, with, when you're an elusive card that's really difficult to block, you want to be doing as much nexus damage as possible to pressure the opponent as much as possible to force them to, um, you know, slow down their game plan and deal with your elusive unit because uh, you, you just put that stress on them. Uh, yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, so you'd, you'd much rather have the 2-1 than the 1-2. Um, yeah, this is a card that has been on the watch list for a while, and so, uh, I'm not too, I guess, I, I guess that would mean I'm not too surprised that something happened, but I'm kind of surprised at this, that it's a 1-2, because this is, uh, that's a rough nerf. I don't, and so, uh, we'll have to see, like, you still draw a card, you know, it's still, it's still very good, because it still replaces itself. But how valuable is the one-two elusive body? I don't know. I don't know if that's if that's going to be worth the three mana draw card. We'll see. Uh, we've we've kind of just seen over the last few patches that uh, card draw in general in this game is just getting nerfed. We saw you know it first started with deep meditation, which that was one I think that needed to happen. But you know that went from um, you know two and four mana to three and five and then pilfered goods and that went from two mana to three mana and that really really hurt pilfered goods now we see it with shadow assassin um and i'm sure there's there's uh, a lot of other examples from before um but i'm just kind of thinking of just the recent card draw um that's that's getting lowered um yeah, this is this is big. I think this is going to really change the the game a lot. I think that I think that this is a card that sneakily was everywhere that people just kind of didn't really, you know, maybe people don't really realize cuz you know they're just kind of used to Shadow Assassin. You know, maybe it's you know, I th I think it's even better than like Mystic Shot as you know, like if you're thinking about like the best cards in the game for the last like 5 months like Mystic Shots up there. But I think this is a card that really impacted games kind of everywhere aggro control mid range it was just everywhere and so i think this is going to kind of change things a lot ionia is looking a lot weaker as a region it's been suffering a lot of nerfs recently and so we'll have to kind of see what the future is for ionia but it's been suffering a lot of nerfs um i think there's okay so there's uh that car okay um the other, uh, we'll get back to these. The other one that I want to talk about with that, of course, is Will of Ionia. Um, I was pretty surprised by this Will of Ionia going up to five mana. Um, you know, it says Will of Ionia is a staple spell that provides Ionia decks a great deal of interaction and utility. Like Shadow Assassin, it's an extremely common card across multiple Ionian strategies, and is especially powerful in both elusives and control-based Ionia decks. Um, and it, you know, the efficiency restricts the variety of champions and strategies across the metagame. I don't know. I think that this was, I honestly, I was surprised by this. And I honestly not sure if I really like this. I think that just that just first reaction that I am not a big fan of this changing. I, yes, Will of Ionia is very versatile, but I don't think that it's, I didn't think that at four mana it was too good. And I think it was kind of a, I think it was kind of necessary for control decks, um, like 
you know, like how how is somebody supposed to play control these days? <laughs> like every kind of control card is getting nerfed, and and I can't complain too much. I'm not somebody who likes control very much, and so I I usually kind of mag against control. But like the, like what you, you know, like you know, like Vi was nerfed, Karma was nerfed, Heimerdinger was nerfed, you know, like Deep Meditation nerf, Shadow Assassin nerf, the um, Solitary Monk nerf, Will of Ionia nerf, like. Basically, like the Vimerdinger deck, like everything in that deck has been nerfed. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, but anyway, I I think that this this card honestly was just fine at four mana, and I liked it a lot. Yes, it, yes, it had yes, it has a lot of um, a lot of use and a lot of different things you can do with it. But but it's still on its on its face, it's still card disadvantage on its own. All you're doing is, um, it's a big tempo play, you know, like where you just put a unit back in somebody's hand. You don't remove any, you know, it doesn't remove any unit. Like obviously there's times like where they use like a, a pump spell on their thing, or, you know, like there's times you can, you can make it, or, you know, you do something during combat, you cancel out combat tricks, that kind of stuff. But on its face value, just on its own, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, uh, exchange with a card one for one um yeah and now five mana for just a bounce effect i don't know like i i don't know if i love this this change to be honest think about mystic shot again mystic shot super versatile you can play it in also you know it's played in every single you know like aggro deck with pnz every control deck with pnz i think that mystic shot and will of ionia are kind of similar like you can use mystic shot to do all sorts of stuff but people aren't really mad at that one I, I don't know why people were so mad at Will of Ionia. I don't. I think that it's just a. It's you need to be able to have some interaction. You know, back and forth. You want to have back and forth interaction. I don't think that the four mana just to recall a unit was really too good. I'm, um, as somebody who doesn't like love control decks or Will of Ionia kind of in general. It's not. It's not like a my favorite card. I just think that it was a, a healthy card before, and. I don't think this change was really necessary. Now, I'm not the one in charge. We'll see how it plays out and everything. Maybe it'll be just fine at five mana. Um, what do you mean you can't counter Will of Ionia? You could just replay your thing. But you can counter it. I mean, you can deny it. Um, you know, it's it's not like... I don't know if it... Yeah, so it kills Tempo and gives a man advantage on a 5-plus unit summon. Sure, I mean... Yeah, but I mean, that doesn't that doesn't mean that the card can't... That the card just shouldn't exist. Right? Like, you... Like, what is that? Like, does that mean the card just can't exist? Like, it's okay to have a spell be better than a unit at times right the unit doesn't always have to be better or like i don't i don't understand i don't understand why that's a bad thing like if you're playing if you're playing a unit that costs five plus mana it's probably super powerful and so there should probably be some kind of answer to it so i don't, I don't see i don't see where the problem with that was um so I don't. Yeah, we'll we'll see how it is at five mana. I mean, I will probably still see play because the the cost of spells is pretty expensive in this game. Um, so I'll probably still see play. Is this? Yeah, this is my water. I'm sure this wasn't like yesterday's water. Um, but I don't think that this is a change that needed to happen. In my opinion. Okay. Uh, so then, yeah, so the core Ionia cards are getting nerfed, so then they're like, well, we need to try to make Ionia a little bit better, so now we're going to have Steel Tempest be two cost, two mana instead of three. It's definitely a lot better at two mana. Definitely is. I don't... Uh, don't... It, like, so yeah, th this does help Yasuo. Some people are excited. They're like, oh man, Yasuo is buffed. Yay. But no, Yasuo is going to be worse with Will of Ionia costing five. And with Shadow Assassin being a 1-2. So 
But no, Yasuo overall has been downgraded. It, this is not. Uh, this is. This is the, uh, you know, the bait and the bait and switch kind of thing, <laughs> where you see you see Steel Tempest and you get excited that oh man, Yasuo is going to be more playable. Um, but uh, yeah, just Steel Tempest on its own, to be honest, definitely better for this. Um, I think this is perfectly fine. I think I think you know if I don't, I think this is a perfectly reasonable change. Um, it's again, it's it's card disadvantage on its face. You know, it just slows down the opponent a little bit, but you're you're spending a card for tempo. Um, but if all of your cards are Steel Tempest and Will of Ionia, you can't you can't really beat anything. Um, you know, because it's just they're just card disadvantage. They're not um, they're not trading. But obviously, with Yasuo in play, then things change. But yeah. This is perfectly reasonable change, in my opinion. Um, we'll see. All right, then River Shaper turning into a two-two instead of a two-one. It's a good buff. River Shaper is a fun card to play, and uh, yeah, it's got it's a nice boost to some Ionia synergy cards. So River Shaper is up there too. I like it. I think River Shaper is a fun card to play. I think this is a cool little buff here. Make this a 2-2 two -two instead of a 2-1. I'm a fan. Um, yeah, you get you can realistically chase the dream of multiple procs. I guess I guess that's the term that um, Riot uses as well. I um, wish they'd have a better one, but procs. Um. Yeah, I wish they'd use better language there. I don't know because it just it just makes people because I've I've had only learned kind of recently what prox means from y'all. Like it just it just this just assumes that you understand shorthand language from some other game that you've played that before. I wish they would use more exact wording. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. Chase the dream multiple like activations. You said yeah. <laughs> you've been using that term since. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think that. Uh, um, just I, that's probably just the writer in me that whenever I write things that I want to not assume that my audience is always familiar with um, shorthand language, uh, unique language to a specific, you know, genre or subset of culture or something like that where like you know i'm not just going to go to the you know i can go to the dictionary and figure out what the word synergy means i can't really go to the dictionary like webster's and figure out like prox what does that mean so i don't so i don't think that those are words you should really use but that's just the writing person in me that's not that's not a problem um Let's see. All right. But yeah, great change. I like River Shaper at 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm going to call this card Gordon now. Golden Narwhal. <laughs> All right. So before, you know, you may not even know what this card did because I don't even know if I know what this this card did. Um, uh, Sign says, is River Shaper better than Shadow Assassin now in a control deck like Karma Ezreal? Possibly. Honestly. Yeah, honest, honestly. That's a, it's a good question, Astonishing, that I wasn't really thinking about. Is River Shaper the new Shadow Assassin? You don't get to draw your card immediately. If they kill your river shaper, you know, with a mystic shot, you're not drawing a drawing a card. You are drawing spells. That's, that's honestly, it's, you'd rather draw a spell than draw a unit most of the time. When you're like in the later game, like basically any even like aggro decks. For the most part, if you could choose draw a spell or draw a unit, you'd you'd rather to say draw a spell. Um. Yeah, I could I could see I mean, I don't want to I don't want to be too definitive, but 
I am I am very open to replacing like in a deck like Karma Ezreal, replacing Shadow Assassin with River Shaper. I am open to that. I would certainly try it out and just see kind of how it played. I would be open to that. Okay, uh, Golden Narwhal. All right, so it used to cost three mana. Now it costs two, and then it used to be a two four. So it was a three mana two four. Now it's a two mana two three. So two mana two three probably more playable than a three mana two four. So um, upgrade there. But let's look at the card. It's it's elusive. That's a good body for an elusive, but it's vulnerable. I don't really see why we're playing this card that's vulnerable that just allows your opponent to um, dictate combat and you know challenge the narwhal with anything all the time um, so yeah I don't I don't know I don't really know like this is golden narwhal and hunting fleet both these cards these are these are two cards that i just have never really considered playing that just have never looked like they would be playable and i don't really see that changing like i don't really see me ever putting golden narwhal or hunter hunting fleet into a deck now the the thing about that is maybe maybe we could play golden narwhal gosh i can't say this this card um all right Cabo, i'll get to that Maybe we can play Golden Narwhal in like a really aggressive Bilgewater deck where like a two mana, two, three elusive, like you're, you, if you're aggressive enough, if you're playing like a real aggressive deck, like this, this could get some, you could, you could get some good use out of this. So maybe, maybe this is actually playable now in that kind of deck. If you're, um, you know, you're real aggressive, sure they get to challenge it later, but if you can, you know, play this, get two damage in maybe protect it a little bit with whatever spell or something. Um, I could see I could see it. I'm I'm not gonna shut off the possibility. Before at a three mana two four, uh, three mana for two power, it's definitely too slow. But now that we're talking two mana, like okay. We this is in the range of, of playability now. It is like I'm chances are I won't play it, but it's in the range. I would not be surprised if you know so don't I don't want to just basically say I'm never going to play this card because I could see me in a week playing this card in like a super aggro Bilgewater deck, right? Um, so playable. All right. Uh, some people in chat are liking this four mana six six. So yeah, this is a four mana six six. When I'm summoned, to summon a golden narwhal for your opponent. So your you know so your opponent gets a two three elusive. Um, Cabo here in chat says that now hunting fleet. Um, I mean, this is definitely an upgrade again. There's a big, big difference between four and five mana. Um, the thing is, is okay. Well, I'll talk about the, the positive. So uh, it says combining hunting fleet with undying, where if you you uh, you have the undying on turn three, you play hunting fleet on turn four. They get the narwhal, but then you can challenge the narwhal with your the undying. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose uh, that that could work out, I suppose. And then, yeah, you just have a six six that then they have to deal with. Um, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's uh, that could be a good combination for hunting fleet. Um, okay, the other thing is this is a Bilgewater card that costs four mana. The competition for Bilgewater cards that cost four mana that are playable are is so high. Um, you know, you can you can just keep on counting like. Four mana Bilgewater cards. There's a million of them that are good. Like that's that's the spot on the curve that they just put everything, and so that also hurts Hunting Fleet because there's a lot of other Bilgewater cards you want to play at four mana. Um, so it's moving down the curve, but it's not moving to a desirable spot on the curve. Does that make sense? It's like it's it upgrades that it does move down, but it moved to a spot where there's so much competition that it's going to be difficult to start playing Hunting Fleet afterwards. Okay, so that's that's all the changes to the cards. Um, 
So what do y'all think? I'll let chat kind of answer this too. What do y'all think got better? What kind of archetypes regions got better after the the patch here? And which, which ones are you, you real excited to play? The obvious thing, and a lot of, most of these changes are nerfs. There's really not very many buffs. Most all of them are nerfs. You know, your buffs are looking at cards that were saw zero play whatsoever before, like your arena bookie. Um, I guess these saw the slightest of play, um, but like that's really where your buffs came in. Again, the slightest of play, slightest of play. So there wasn't any like specific archetype that really seems to at least existing arch highly played. There we go, an existing highly played archetype that got buffed. Um, The, and so therefore, with that knowledge, there's not really an existing um, highly played archetype that got buffed, then the archetypes that didn't get nerfed, probably uh, they gain more um, because they didn't get nerfed. And so the big, the big one that a lot of people are saying is Ash Sejuani, the, the um, mid-range Frostbite. Those of y'all that have been watching the stream know that over the, about the last week, I have basically really, really struggled against the Frostbite midrange with everything. And whenever we played it once on stream, we went 5-0, including, you know, we played a couple of mirror matches. But that's that's the deck that I already thought was the best deck over even Noxus Harrowing since about a week ago. And now that nothing's changing with that deck while things are getting worse for a lot of other decks, it does certainly seem like that is the number one deck in Legends of Runeterra right now. Midrange Frostbite. Um... So we'll kind of, so we'll see like how, like that doesn't mean that like in two weeks and three weeks like that, that it'll still be the case. We'll see what changes with the metagame and how people kind of start trying to uh, deal with that deck. Besides that, the other thing that I think really got buffed was Demacia. Just I've, I've really been impressed with um, all of the challenger units in Demacia and just uh, Demacia in general recently. Y'all know that I've been playing a bunch of Demacia, doing well with it. And Really, Demacia didn't see any nerfs. There was the the one Relentless Pursuit, but that's not a card that I play in any of my decks anyway. Um, you know, I play the more mid range stuff, so I don't don't really care about that card. Uh, so yeah, the D Demacia definitely um, excited about that. Except for the Brom nerf that hurt my Bannerman Brom deck. That was unfortunate for that deck. But yeah, so I um, I like Demacia moving forward. I like Frostbite mid range. Um, both of those for sure um all right ran danny cool got a donation deck there for arena bookie with draven and vision awesome so uh yeah and then the the zed shen version yeah will of ionia got nerfed there but that wasn't that's probably okay that's not like a uh critical card in the deck i can either replace that or move down on copies just fine so yeah it looks like uh, then we said that um, Lux Heimerdinger may be better, and yeah, that that you know that may that may have just gone up a little bit. I could see that. Um, maybe like River Shaper Demacia, like that could be you know like with your Fiora River Shaper kind of deck. Like those decks are fun to play. I wonder if that is going to go up like River Shaper buff. Like that's pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, you know like. Uh, there's a lot um, there's a lot to still try out. We'll see what the answers to said like the frost by mid range. That's the thing about Demacia is Demacia looks good against a whole lot of things, but the the weakness of Demacia probably is the frostbite mid range and that didn't change at all. So <laughs> we'll kind of see. Um, maybe the nerfing of Crimson Disciple will allow some slower decks to, to see play. We'll see. Legion Grenadier, as we talked about, I don't think this is really much of a nerf at all. Maybe even a little bit of a buff. I mean, I think this is basically just a a net zero, in my opinion. It's just change. This is obviously a nerf. Um, that's obviously a nerf, but we'll see. Noxus, Noxus definitely got hit, but Noxus is not unplayable. It will still be... Um, I think it will still be a better than average region even with these changes. Um, Shadow Isles, I don't think 
I don't think there's a single Shadow Isles card that changed, was there? I don't think there was. No, there wasn't a single Shadow Isles card that changed at all. And so honestly, that's that's probably just a good sign for Shadow Isles. Moving forward, like there's there's some good stuff with Shadow Isles with um, you know, with your fearsome units and with um you know, with Wraithcaller, uh Hecarim, Thresh, Callista, Elise, all four champions in Shadow Isles are all very good effective champions, good efficient champions too. And so um, maybe this will help Shadow Isles come back because they did nothing change with Shadow Isles at all. Um, Ruination is a pretty decent card against Frostbite midrange. Uh, it's not always the easiest because Trifarian Assessor can draw a bunch of cards, but you know that's you know that could be a direction that we're moving towards with some more Shadow Isles. All right, but anyway, um, that's the patch notes there now let's talk about the new event we're going to do that in here too um we'll go a little bit quicker we're, we already spent an hour talking about the new cards so there's a new event called the spirit blossom festival it starts july 22nd goes through august 19th so that's we can see that's when so it should be going through until the next patch when we're going to have the next brand new region next large patch with the new region new cards all that kind of stuff that should be happening august 19th it looks like um so this this epic uh the spirit blossom festival has a new lab that's called bestow and you can see some stuff about it here we'll we'll talk about that some more it has epic quest and rewards and it has an event pass all right let's let's see what this is all about and then i guess coming august 5th are two more epic quests and new spirit blossom items in store huh we'll we'll see what those are about all right and that's in this page here event overview spirit blossom all right so there's a video uh do y'all think we should play the video what do y'all think do you do you want to see the video uh there's a new lab bestow all right so in the new lab uh yes yes okay all right Let's play this video real quick. I mean, hopefully the sound isn't too bad. Well, that's no sound. Can I not? Okay, I won't be able to full screen because I'm in F11. That's okay. New pets. The dragon binds us. Aww. What is gained when we return malevolence? Pretty sweet looking board, new sleeves. My destination. I'll tell you when I card backs, I guess they're called. Bunch of new quests. Version, those are existing champions. Let's do a little bit of pausing here. So we're, you're gonna get a bunch of new quests um, that are just kind of like like our, like your normal quests right now. Like you don't have to do anything special about them. I guess they're gonna be called epic quests, and by doing them, you you earn something called petals, I believe. And so there's a bunch of those, and then there'll be a new. Um, you know, like your reward paths with all the different regions. There's going to be a new one with uh, being able to unlock uh, different stuff. Like you get different emotes and shards and things like that. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. And you can you can buy a, a premium pass and earn more things. Like, uh, like if you buy the premium pass, you can see some of these... Um, you can get like the existing pets. You can get the Spirit Blossom version of them, right? So that's like your Gloom Tooth and uh, Silver Silver Wing and stuff like that. Thanks, Big Alfredo. There's a donation deck there. 
And there'll be a brand new lamp called Bestow. Whenever whenever things die in play, then their power and health just get added to something in hand. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. That'll be a fun lab. We each hold a world within. I go where the road takes me. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this start this starts tomorrow. So the the lab um, is going to be where you choose one of six pre-constructed decks. So you just choose one deck. They start the game at thirty health. So if you don't like dying right away, this will be better for you. And then and that thing, whenever every unit dies, the stats are just moved to a random unit in hand. You just gain those stats. And so these are going to be some. You know, you'll end up with. Uh, so a little bit longer games with some huge units that are, you know, going to be 20, 20 power and hitting for a bunch and stuff like that. So, so you should have some crazy games. It's a, that's what the labs are all about, playing at crazy games and having fun for that. Um, and now Epic Quest and Petals. Um, so, so there's going to be Epic Quest along with like your regular quests um, now. And so there's, uh, there's no... Looks like I guess two epic quests are available at patch one six. There's no like, there's uh, all right. I'll just move to the next part. I don't know exactly what I was gonna say. All right, so then there's what you can be earning. So you're gonna be earning petals. Um, you don't have to worry about like only earning this or uh, this like petals or earning XP towards like your region. Like this will just be an additional thing that you're earning both at the same time. You don't have to like play more and try to get your region stuff and then get get your spirit blossom stuff and so on. Um, uh, let's see. All right, so you can spend 975 coins to get the premium event pass. If you do not, you will earn just the things that say that they're free. So like once you get to 10 petals, and we'll talk about how to get petals in a little bit. Once you get to 10 petals, you'll earn this icon. Once you get to 40 petals, you'll get this swoon emote. At 60 petals, you get some thousand free shards. At 100 petals, you get a random champion. Once you get to 120, another thousand shards, and so on, if you don't spend any money. If you spend 975 coins, if you buy those coins, then you get all these premium things. Then at, at 20 petals, you get this new emote. And um, at 50 petals, you get the silver wing guardian. Uh, with the sharp steel 70 petals you get the card back and so on so you need so most of the rewards are if you spend the the gold definitely looks like if you're somebody who likes um, all the extras if you really like card backs and guardians and um, emotes this is definitely worth it you get a whole bunch of those for 975 coins a lot more than you normally get like um, as you can see here 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 19. You get 19 extra items. Some of those are just being a whole bunch of shards also, or expedition token, but most of them being guardians and card backs and emotes and stuff like that. Um, so, you, but you don't, you don't just get everything for free. You do need to, do need to play a decent amount to earn these petals. Um, now, the pass expires August 19th. As we talked about, that's whenever the next region and everything's going to be coming out. So you have basically a month to play and earn petals. All right. Um, where does it... Where does it say how to earn petals? I know, I know how what it is with the petals, but I wanted to show it on screen. Does it not show? Where does it show the petals? Let's see, petals here. Um, okay, there we go. All right, so your first win each day will earn four petals. So you get four petals for for just winning your first game, and each win after that you get one petal. So basically, if you win ten games in a day, you'll earn ten petals, one for each win, and then you also get like an additional three. Basically, you'll earn thirteen. Because like if you think about your first one, you get one pedal for a win. You basically get three bonus pedals for just winning a game 
and then it's just one pedal per win. So however many games you think you win in a day, take that much, add three, and that's how many pedals you'd be getting a day. You win five games a day, you're hitting eight pedals a day. You win 20 games a day, you get 23 pedals a day, and so on. And so you have an entire month to earn these. Um, if you don't play very much, then maybe not spending the, the 975 won't really be worth it because you only earn, earn a couple of things. But if you play a lot, um, you can you know earn all of this stuff. So you need to get to 270 pedals uh, to get everything. Um, yep, and so then August 19th is going to be the new set. Yep, that'll be the new region, and uh, it'll be a big set with just like this uh, last one that we have with the Rising Tides. We're going to get a new region and then also additions onto all of the existing regions as well. Um, I... Yeah, it looks like there's no boards or guardians for free. I knew I know the the board's not free. Doesn't look like there's any guardians for free either. There's card backs, you can an emo or let's see, there's emotes you can earn and and a card back and different emotes but not any guardians. It doesn't look like there is a board. Where is the I guess the board was in the other page. I guess the board was in the other page. Um, there's a board that's also 1,200 coins that you, that you can buy. Um, that board that was in there. And the, that board is supposedly there. It says that it is... Um, uh, it's interactive. So we'll see what, that, what that's about. <laughs> hey, what's up, Nick? That board does look pretty great. Yeah, so we'll have inter interactable pieces. So if your opponent's just roping and not doing anything, you can, you'll be able to click on stuff. Um, okay, so so some FAQs about that. Um, will these items ever come back? Possibly, but not likely, and not anytime soon. You know, like so this is basically like a one-time thing. Um, but you know, may you know, like obviously they're not going to say that in five years that, that it won't come back or something. Maybe, maybe, but probably not. All right. So any game, including AI and friend challenge, will count towards your quests that you have, like with your epic quests and all that kind of stuff. But the pedals, um, the four pedals awarded for your first win of the day, um, are available through any game except AI and Friend Challenge. So you don't get to earn the pedals with AI and you don't get to earn the, the pedals with Friend Challenge. So you can just play anything else. You can play Normal, you can play Ranked, you can play Expedition, Gauntlet, Lab. So the way to earn the wins with pedals, you can play any of these game modes. It doesn't just have to be Ranked. Um, you know, you can do it, I guess like, they don't. They didn't write the event, but yeah, like the, the event, you can just play in Normal. Um, you know, you do your expeditions, labs, gauntlets, that kind of stuff. But you don't get to just play against the AI and win games against the AI and earn pedals. Yeah, I'll be I'll be getting the new board for sure. Um, uh, so yeah, so each um, if you have uh, so how many days is it from? tomorrow the 22nd until the 19th i guess july is 31 days so there'll be what nine more days in july Does that sound right let's check one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 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 more days in july so you'll have 10 more days in july and then 19 more days after that so 29 days um you know so so you can average less than 10 petals a day but, you know, basically 10 pedals a day, basically, is what you, you can average and, like, skip one day. Because um, maybe it's only 28, because maybe you don't count the 19th. So basically 10 pedals a day, which that would be 7 wins a day for a month. If you average about 7 wins a day, you can earn all of it. About, And that's with, like, taking, like, one or two days off. So that's a good approximation. Um, do, 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 do. And then, yeah, you don't have to pick uh, what quest to make progress on. 
um all of your whenever you play you just simultaneously count towards your epic quests and your event quests and your regular daily quests and your region road and all of that you know you just play you just get all the rewards uh for everything and of course it's free to play then yeah you can pay for the additional event pass for 975. okay so that's our first event it's gonna be basically a month-long thing of um the spirit blossom looks pretty sweet looks pretty sweet i mean i think this is just a cool cool thing to just get a whole bunch of new fun things on your account you know you don't have to spend the coins you can still just uh go you know with just normal if you just play it, you're going to be earning you know an extra champion and shards and some extra emotes and stuff like that you know even if you don't want to spend any coins and if you want to spend those coins then you can get a whole bunch more of all of those and then a bunch more guardians and uh um emotes and all that, and card backs and things like that um i don't know about that herman asked can you pay it later and get the past things later i'm i do not know i do not know if you can you know just play and not pay anything and then once you're at like level 22 and you're like okay it looks like i'm going to be getting these other ones then you spend the money and then it will backdate it and let you get all those i don't i don't know how that will work um chat is saying that probably that's how that'll work because that's what Riot has done with league of legends before um so so that's how it will likely be it doesn't really say anything in here um but yeah that i would say likely that's how it will work is that likely if you um you know august 17th you can you would be able to buy it and get all the things you've earned i would think but not 100 percent on that uh there we go all right so that's our patch one six live reaction again those of y'all watching on youtube later of course leave leave those comments about all those cards that we discussed feel free to let me know what you're really excited about um card wise what do you want to see on stream like right you know what do you want me to play what kind of decks do you want me to build with any new cards or things like that you know leave those comments let me know i always like seeing those and i'll try to uh, accommodate those if i can but anyway thank you so much for watching the live reaction here and i'll see you for the next video